Good morning, everybody. It's John again. Um, vlog number two on myself, my uh, situation in my life, everything else. And Gabby's here again with me. Hello. <laughs> um, so, all right, Gabby, what are we going to do about today? All right. So I think we left off talking a little bit about uh, your life, John, um, all the way up. I think we ended um, high school, high school experience. <laughs> Um, after graduation and things like that. So I want to talk and ask you a little bit about um, what you did after high school. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I went to college, actually, but my, like right after high school. I graduated in July or June, and I went straight to college in August. Uh, me and my mom actually went to college together. Well, she actually studied with me. So it was kind of neat, but then... Once I got, I, got, I got sick, I was in the hospital for seven, seven to eight days. I can't exactly remember. Okay. So, so wait, what um, what college did you go to? Like um, a community college, or where did you go to college at? Yeah, I went to a community college. I lived in La Trobe when I was, before, um, when I was my child, when I was in childhood. And okay. Up to up to age twenty five, I lived in La Trobe, so that's Westmoreland County. So that's. Westmoreland County Community College. Okay. So when your mom, when you said your mom kind of went to college with you, that's not super typical. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so she, she didn't just go for you, she took the classes alongside you as well? Yes, she actually go, went and took the classes with me. Okay. Um, What'd yeah. you guys go for? <clears throat> we went for criminal justice. Oh, nice. Right. Getting those bad guys. Yeah, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So... In college, um, people who are able-bodied, you know, they are, they usually like take take notes or, um, you know, might might have like an iPad or something that they're taking notes on. What did you do um, to kind of study and take notes and things like that? Uh, like again, my mom was there, so she took our notes. Okay. We got the double-sided paper that if you print on it, it prints two different type prints a copy of it. Oh, okay. So she had a copy of it, and I had a copy of it. So, yeah, so it was pretty nice to be able to do that. And then you were telling me earlier, um, you guys recorded some of the... Yeah, we had, well, we had... Uh, lectures or something? Yeah, we had, like, tape recorders. Okay. So if you miss anything, you kind of go back. And right. And reason. Go back, listen to it again. And that was my way of studying for tests. Okay. I'm not good at reading and... Reading words and... Cognitively memorable. Yeah, yeah. I had to hear it. Okay. You know, that's why, like with music, I had to hear it. You're like an auditory learner. Yeah, pretty much. That. Okay. Very cool. So, with um, how did it work with with like testing, right? So she she couldn't help you like on the tests and things. So, is there like an office that or um, accommodations that they can provide for you? Um, yeah, all colleges have, like, the stability services. Okay. And that's for people with disabilities of all kinds. They go there, they can help you, like, for me, they helped me take the test. Somebody, I gave the answers to somebody, and they wrote them down for me. Okay, so you verbally, they, you right. read the question, and then you told them the answers, and they wrote it down on the paper for right. you? Right, yeah. And then they would give that to your professor? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's how I took my test, because I couldn't be in the same room. I couldn't use my mom, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I had a friend who even just had, like, dyslexia or, like, mm -hmm. she needed an extra time. Mm -hmm. And she was able to go to the Office of Disabilities and they were able to kind of provide those accommodations that she needed to be successful. Yeah, that's what they did for me. Okay. Not only did they offer a person their answers now, they offered me more time and other things I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So um, you said you yeah so you were going to school, um, going to criminal justice classes, taking those courses, and then you mentioned um, that you got sick. Yes. So when you say get sick, um, what happened? What I had for anybody that don't know, I had cellulitis, which if you don't know what that is, that's a blood infection, of, 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 an infection of the blood cells. Okay. In your body, and it comes it comes from bacteria. It's a bacterial, like a bacterial, um, what you call it, I can't think of the word. Infection. Infection, that's in it. Blood. Blood, uh, uh, bacteria infection. 
it could come with with, with that. It could come through like slices, like holes, like other things. It, that the bacteria gets in it and it gets into your bloodstream, and it causes you your blood vessels and bloodstream to get sick, and that's what happened with me. So, and I had to be in the hospital for, like I said, seven to eight days, and it was hard. My first time ever being in a hospital, other than being in high, uh, when I was a little kid. But other than that, this is the first time I was in the hospital. So you had it, in, you had it in your legs, right? Yeah. So it's like I, swollen. It was red. swollen, red, really hot to touch. And, and some people even get like fever and chills and stuff yeah, from that I, infection. Yeah, I, I, I never got that. Okay. Not this time around, which was, was okay. a surprise because. That time that I got it was the worst I've ever had it. Okay. And, but, which is weird, because every time I would, this is how I knew I was getting to tell you this before anybody else did. This is going to sound gross, kind of. But, every time I would burp, mm -hmm. it tasted like rotten eggs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Somehow, I don't know how that works. I don't know how your, I don't know how your body functions to the point where something was wrong something wasn't right okay to the point where i was tasting something weird yeah and i knew that's what i was gonna get to tell us mm, interesting interesting yeah. so um after all this and you were able to kind of recover a little bit did you keep up with your classes during this time or what you know i'm sure it was really hard to do so yeah because you, fig you figure i was in the hospital for a week mm -hmm. and then i got out and I didn't want to do anything. I was just too so tired and draining. It drained the life out of me almost. And it's overwhelming to kind of know that you have those other responsibilities, such as school and yeah. things like that. So. so I was freaking out. I'm like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Mom's like, don't worry about it. We'll just withdraw from this mm -hmm. class and if, if these classes. If you feel like going back next fall or next next, next semester, you could. then we can. If not, then that's whatever. Do you regret not going back to... yes absolutely mm -hmm. i would have graduated already mm -hmm. i probably yeah. would have my own i'd have a couple degrees probably by now and i probably would have a really good job by now so, mm -hmm. but life is life and sometimes yeah, you can't yeah, we can't, re can't regret anything yeah i don't regret anything mm -hmm. i mean well we said you did but you right i don't i do but you do, I don't. We don't yeah yeah you would have gone back if you had the, the choice again but it is what it is right. yeah so um you told us before throughout your life your mom took care of you um as far as personal care yes. and things like that um when did you move out i moved out on january 27th 2003. so next january coming it'll be 22 years wow so how old are you when you moved out then i was 25. 25 okay because i'll be 47 in august so why did you move out in the first place? Um, I moved out because I, I felt like I needed to move out. Mm -hmm. Because my mom was the only person taking care of me and she was getting older. And I mean, she's not that much older. But she also was diagnosed with a kidney disease back in 1996, the year I graduated high school. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course that's how that works. But, yeah, so I decided right then and there that I was going to move out because she needed to take care of herself first. But it wasn't like that when I lived with her. She always took care of me first, then herself. So which, you were worried she would still continue to take care of you right, before herself. Right. And she, now that I know my mother, she would have, no doubt, absolutely, not even a question. So that's why I decided to leave because I didn't want her to do that. Mm -hmm. She needed to take care of herself. Yeah. So. Yeah. So where'd you, I, you live in a group home. Yes. A lot of people probably don't know what a, what a group home exactly is. Um, so the group home you live in is, um, stands for other related conditions, correct? Yeah. So it's the Maryland foundation. So it's mainly physical. Right. So the uh, ORC, which is other related conditions. Which means, like, 
other injuries like mild the spinal cord, we have a brain injury, we have muscular dystrophy, we have spina bifida, mm -hmm. anything. Okay. How many people live in your group home? As of right now, we have seven, but we're hopefully getting another guy here soon. Okay. But we don't know how we don't know what's going on there. But there's supposed to be eight of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, what is the setup like? Do you have your own room? Yeah. What's the bathroom situation like? Yeah, we have our own rooms. We have there's eight rooms. We each have our own bedroom, our own apartment. It's called an apartment. That's what they call it anyhow. Um, and we have what they call Jack and Joe bathrooms, which is. And then there's my back bathroom door with the Terminator sign on it. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's we have a Jack and Joe bathroom, which means we I share no one's in there. <laughs> I see my bathroom. Oh, is, is this your shower? No, that's Ken, uh, the other guys. Okay. But yeah, this is the bathroom. But you can see it, you know, this light kind of blinds everybody. But yeah, we, we we share bathrooms. Like it's kind of hard sometimes because if I have to take a shower and he has to go to the bathroom, it's kind of hard for him because then he has to hold it while I'm showering and all that mess and it's just crazy and it's all crazy. So like and vice versa. Of course, he gets up really early, so he he showers in the morning, so I don't have to worry about that with him. So. Okay. So can you, um, and you, then you guys, so you have that, then you guys have a communal, like, living room. Yeah, And then room, a communal kitchen. 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 Yeah. The kitchen and dining room are pretty much one of those, one. It's like an open floor yeah, concept. Yeah, but oh. we, yeah, it's like an open floor concept. The front of the house is huge. <laughs> like, my other house I had, when I lived in Lake Charles, could probably fit in that whole front. Of, really? Yeah. It's oh. really small. Okay. It was me. Me, my mom, and my Great Dane. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gotcha. Imagine a Great Dane having the zoomies in the <laughs> little house like that. That's not fun. That's but, good. yeah. But, yeah, we have a community stuff. We have uh, an office, an office, uh, uh, a staff bathroom, and the nursing office. So. Mm -hmm. so, can you walk us through kind of... A day in the life of, of you from, from kind of morning, morning to, yeah. to evening. Right. Um, yeah. Um, staff come in at like six thirty. Six thirty. Yes, I know. I am not not a big fan of that. But Do you want to wake up at six thirty? Not personally. <laughs> no. But I we have to we have to because we have to be out and have our meds and be ready completely and out in the kitchen by seven thirty. Okay. So it's not necessarily due to preference, but because yeah. there's so many, there's other people to kind of get up and take care of. Right. Pretty much. You got to take, get, get everybody up. Everybody has to eat breakfast. Make sure, I mean, there's a couple, there's one feed person needs fed here. So you have to have a staff for him mm -hmm. and other staff have to be out there. To help other ones that are, the other person can't help. So it seems like you have to be very patient yes. and accommodating towards Others. other people here yeah. and like understanding because it's not always about you. Yeah. Yeah. It should be, but it's just. Well, not in a great, not a place like this. Yeah. You have other eight, seven other people or six other people right mm -hmm. now who also need the yeah. same level of care. Sometimes. Right. And some, yeah. and there's a couple of the people here need more care than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So medically gotcha. too. Yeah, so they come in. Um, they come in. They get me up. They 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 clean me up. They put take my mask off. For I had to wear a BiPAP because I I have uh, sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea. Oh, for those who don't know, is every time I take a uh, every time I go to sleep, I have problems breathing, and I had to put that on. Ooh, it's like an alien. Yeah, really. <laughs> I sound like Darth Vader when I have it on. It's like... <sighs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's so, me. um... They, uh... Morning, dressing. They dress me. They, they put this blue sling underneath me. 
which is behind me, as you can see. Yeah, explain this. What do you? What is this used for? This is this is used to take me in and out of my chair, to put me in and out of bed, or in and out of my shower chair. Uh, when they use it, they use this Hoyer right here. Just don't hit me in the head with it. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah. There you go. And that's the track that has to go on. So, yeah. We have to use it. That way it lifts me up and down. You just hook it on like this. And raise it up. But you gotta have four. Four yeah. sides on, right? <laughs> one side won't work. I mean, I mean it down. could, but it would just pop me out of the chair. See? That's how it works. So, yeah. It's actually pretty cool. They used to have a big manual lift that had to push around. And people got tired of that, so. Yeah. It's nice to have it on the ceiling because then you can kind of push it out of the way or raise it up. And yeah. All right. Or take it down the, and charge it and stuff. So, as far as um, personal care, like brushing teeth and yes. deodorant, uh, mm -hmm. staff does that for you? Yes. Okay. And then are you able to assist in dressing? Yes, I have I, I have a little bit of movement to her. I can like lift my arm up or straight it out or both yeah. sometimes to get my shirt on. Yeah. Do you usually pick out your outfits? No, because I'm half asleep. I'm like You don't want I'm to I'm like ninety percent asleep and they just pick them out for me the same uh, okay. way. Like if I, unless I'm going somewhere important. Mm hmm Like when I went to that the presentation. Yeah. I picked that outfit up. Okay. So, so it's not that you don't get the opportunity, you really just don't care. Right. In the beginning. For the most part, yeah. I mean, unless it's not mismatched. It was like a white uh, pink top with blue shorts, then maybe have a problem. But, yeah. But no. Other than that, I don't care. Okay. Especially because I'm here all the time, so. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so... Um, brushing teeth and stuff like that, do you, you said you do that after breakfast? Yeah, I do that after breakfast. Okay, okay. So, um, breakfast, what? I use an adaptive, I do feed myself. Okay. And I use an adaptive, um, utensils. Uh, it's like, probably what, I don't know, a couple feet long, maybe? Like an like extendo a, fork. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's like I don't have to really lift too hard, lift too much. What hand do you use typically? I use my left one. Okay. This one. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't have too much, too good of movement in it, but I could still do it. Okay. And I, I have a really long straw. So, and this is a long straw. It's really long, so I can just, because I can't bend, so I don't have to reach too far. I usually put, pull this arm out and put it right here beside me. And I'm not going to do that right now. I just don't feel like moving. <laughs> what? This hand? Yeah. Oh, so that you can kind of get yeah. to it easier. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. So, will that with that hand, so you say with that hand, you like to... I take it off the tray. Okay. And put the cup right where my arm is. Okay. Because then it makes it a little bit closer to me. And, I mean, I can lean forward to get it. So. Mm-hmm. I have a little bit of movement, not that much. But so you're saying you can I do it? Yeah. You take I, this hand and then you'd move it down here. Yeah. And then this would go here. Yep. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. You move your hand back. Yep. Extendo. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's how I drink. So, what about, let's talk about, um, so you said that sometimes staff, will they, like, you'll just kind of tell them where you want things while you're eating, and they'll kind of be able to move yeah. it for you to be more independent. Yeah, I've got the long, like you were saying, i got long fork, long spoon, I, and I use them all the time, well, mm -hmm. I try to it now. I don't like using them for sandwiches and stuff, because it's like, I have to eat one piece at a time. Yeah, yeah. I can't really stab a whole half sandwich mm -hmm. and bite it like everyone else can, so they have to cut it in like fours, and I have to take each piece apart. 
Okay. You're kind of annoying, but it is what it is. I'm probably a little bit used to it by now. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> but, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so another thing we wanted to touch on was this bad boy. Okay. So what happens if you were trying to eat and you didn't have a, have a tray? That's when I had to have staff help me. Okay. Because I can't get close enough to the table. I mean, I probably could have. Mm -hmm. But I had... The problem was, I, I broke my chair or tray like two years ago. Right before Christmas, too. That was nice. Um, and I was without a tray for five months. So I had to go without a tray for that amount of time. So, and they had to help me eat. They fed me. But, so what are all what are all the things you use for your tray? Like is the tray really a big, oh, yeah, a big it's, part it's, of your it's, life or Oh yeah, absolutely. It's the main part of my life really, besides my wheelchair. You know, I had to put my I had to put my glass and stuff on here. It's how I eat. I put my food on my tray. I don't put my soap on my tray. I don't know why that's on <laughs> We like soap. Yeah, we like the soap. That they clean. <laughs> so that is um that what is that part of your tray for? Yeah, that, that, pad? that, that holds this arm up. Okay. Because this this arm flops around. Like if this was off, it'd be falling off the tray. Okay. You know, I even though I have, uh, even though I put my arm out of my tray, if I go somewhere or if I move, if I had to go through a tiny door, I had to put my arm up so it don't get ripped off. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You have to keep it on there. So whenever your tray, um, you said your tray broke. Yeah, so yeah. It, it fell behind where I'm at now. It fell behind me against the uh, dresser, and somebody didn't realize it fell, and they stepped back and they stepped down on it and it busted it in half. Wow. So I was like, yeah, so that wasn't fun. I had to wait five months for to get a new one. Why'd you have to wait that long? Because it takes people forever to freak and make it, plus it has to be specially Specially made to like cut out for my controller, to have special clips in the back for my, to tighten it to my chair, mm -hmm. so the tray don't flop around and fly off my chair. And then you don't want it like cutting into you and right. in your body, right. so they have to kind of like make it especially for you, huh? Kind of mold that around me, and stuff like that, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it takes so long for it to make it. Well, I really shouldn't have taken it as long as it did that time. Because uh, that was right near the end of COVID, and getting because they have to order special order all the parts, yeah. and mm -hmm. so not only the people making it, they have to wait till the parts come in. Yeah. And then they have to make it, and then they have to make sure it fits your chair. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that wasn't fun. Yeah. Has there ever been? So what did you do whenever you didn't have the tray? I had a table sitting in there over here. Okay. One of my other roommates have a had the card table, and I sat it up in here. And I used it for a table for my computer. Mm -hmm. I had no other choice. Yeah. Either that or don't put a computer. Yeah. yeah. And that's like something that you do often. What? Go to the computer. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> never on here. But whenever you like go out into the main dining room or anything, like if you wanted to be independent and just have stuff on your tray and take it yeah. out there, you weren't able to do that because you didn't have your tray. No. Yeah. If I was going to be out there for an extended amount of time, mm -hmm. I actually had them put like a stool beside me, okay, on the right side, and put a pillow on top of it, and put my arm on the pillow. Oh, why? Just for comfort. Okay. So I could stay out there. Okay. Because if not, I'm gonna just have to hold my arm off to the side without gotcha. a tray. Okay. Because yeah. it's like holding your arm up yeah. there, so you'll lean to that side if that wasn't there. Shortly. Yeah. Okay. I still will. I still do, as you can see. Mhm. Mm still lean to the right. So with this chair, is this? This chair is specifically for you. Yes, it's molded to me. So you have a molded back here, so yep. it kind of goes with the flow of your body and your mm -hmm. makeup, your right. anatomical position or whatever right. you say. Um, if I didn't have it molded back, I would be leaning to the right way more okay. than I am now. Okay. So what happens if they need to fix something on your chair? Well, they'll have to give me a rental. And the rental will not be comfortable. Because it's not fitted for you. Right. I mean, it's comfortable, but it's not really. Like you said, it's not that it's not formed for me. So when I wear that, I had to go without a 
leaning sideways, which isn't fun. But luckily for me, when my tray fits on those chairs, so that's, that's good. I can, okay. I can have the tray on still. Okay, that's good. That's good. So what happens if they have to, if they have to take your chair and you don't have a chair for the day? What do you do? For the day, I just um, lay in my bed, watch TV or play my games and take a nap if I have if I feel like it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you don't really have a choice. It's kind of like today right. you don't have your chair, so these are your options. Yeah, so you can either play, watch TV, or sleep. Okay. And that even means like when it's time for lunch or something, if I'm in bed, yeah. I have to eat in bed. Okay. And that's when they have to help me feed mm-hmm. me because I can't do it on my bed. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. What about, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about transportation as well. Um, so a lot of times I think that we take advantage of like people who are able-bodied. If I want to go somewhere, I'll just jump in my car and I'll go. Right. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter what time, what day, nope. you know, anything. If you want to go somewhere, uh, what do you do? Uh, hopefully we have enough staff here for that. We have two vans, three vans actually, but one's in the shop right now still. Um, and if I needed to go somewhere today, I had to have them take me down, take me to wherever I need to go. Mm-hmm. Can staff just stop with their, just stop and take you, or? No, I mean, if there's other appointments, or then they can't really do it to, mm-hmm. that, with the today, so to speak, you know, because there's too many people, not enough staff, too many appointments, you know, if there's like two or three appointments, both vans will be gone, so we'll be able to do that. Or people have like other therapies or other things that they're going to that are planned. Yes, yeah. So, do you normally, if you wanted to go somewhere and have staff take you, you'd probably have to plan a little bit in advance and let them know? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, if I want to go, like, say, Walmart, I'll go, hey, tomorrow we have time, can I go to Walmart tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, oh, yeah. That's, and then you're used to that at this point, but that is very different than some other people and how they live, because if they want to go somewhere, they don't need anybody's... Permission. Permission, or I don't want to say the word permission, but it's kind of like you do have to rely on the schedules of mm-hmm. other people a lot yes. more than the average person. To, to, to get you from A to B. So other than having staff here in the staff vans, is there another way or another option for you? Uh, yeah, we have uh, what's called access, which is a transportation for people with disabilities and the elderly. They pick you up and take you wherever you want to go within the, within Allegheny County. Okay. You know, if I want to go to, down to Accushore Stadium, with the Steelers, they can take me down there. Okay, so they just pick you up and they just take you straight there whenever you no, want? No, not all the time. Okay. No. You had to call, first you got to call 24 hours in advance. Oh. Because they can't just come today and say, hey, I'm going to go to Accusure today. You can't pick me up. Because they have a schedule. No, they, have, they have, their schedules are crazy there. Mm-hmm. So you got to call 24 hours in advance. So that means tomorrow. If I want to go tomorrow, tomorrow, I have to call today. And hopefully they can give me the times I need, because sometimes they don't have the openings at the times I need. Okay. So then they'll have to find, figure out what time suits me. And sometimes, if I am go down there by 7 o'clock, sometimes they're like, well, the only time we can pick you up is at 3.30. No, I'm not going down there and sitting down there for four hours. Wow, so if you, if if you want to I mean, go somewhere the and they don't have the time, you have to kind of, they'll get you there, but you might be there... Two hours earlier yeah. than you need to. Or not, or uh, pick me up at well, uh, an hour and a half before we're supposed to be there, but then I still had to ride around for two hours. Wow. Three hours. Because you're waiting for you're other waiting people. For yeah, because we, we go around and pick other people up. Wow. I mean, that don't happen all the time. Yeah. Most of the time it does, but not all, not too, too bad. Okay. Yeah, I think the most I've ever been on access is four hours. Wow. Yeah, that was not good. Wow. Well, that must make it hard then. If I know some people who have jobs in the community, they take access to their job, right? Yes, and that's hard because there's some people who, like if we go say Walmart or something, and you tell the boss, "Hey, I know you're gonna hire me. I'm, I know I'm hired. I just gotta let you know that there's gonna be times I'm gonna be late because I have to. I have to uh, 
depend on access transportation. And you'll be like, oh, that's fine, that's okay. That's a big deal. But then there's other people that you tell them that, they're like, oh, no, you can't. you got to be here. Mm-hmm. you got to be on here on time, or if you're going to be late, a couple minutes late. Not, that's fine. But that's, that's kind of hard because it, you kind of have absolutely no control no, over that. Not at all. Because you, you might want to be prompt. Right. Maybe you don't. But, you know, it's it's kind of like you literally rely on other people, so it's kind of out of your hands at that point. Right. It is. Or absolutely. you have to be there two hours early just to be on time or something, right. depending. Right. Interesting. So it probably makes it hard for you to find a, a job if they want you to be on time and be mm-hmm. prompt and things like that. That's why I lately I've been looking for jobs near here. Okay. So that way it's possible I can get a ride from where Okay. From staff and mm-hmm. stuff to take you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that I think a lot of people who are able-bodied definitely take for granted is that they're able to do what they want when they want. Yes, absolutely. Um, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And people don't really think of that. Like something as simple as getting to go to work, you know, right. and going at the time. And le- I was probably late today, so. <laughs> but I made that choice. So if, if you were right. late, you might not have made that choice. It no, just happened. I don't because, like to be late for anything, but yeah. you right access, there's always a chance. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, they could go straight down. And that, that's the... That's if you're lucky. If you're lucky enough for it to go straight down, that's great. So when you call, they'll usually tell you a pickup time to get you there around that time that yeah, you want to get there. No, it takes, they usually do an hour and a half before I'm supposed to be there. Really? Yeah. That's so, when they pick you up? Yeah. So okay. if they say, you have to be there by 7.30, mm-hmm. we'll pick you up at 5.30. Wow. Or wow. 6 o'clock. Okay. But you and then you make stops early. to get everybody else on. Not all the time, but most of, sometimes, yeah. Okay. Sometimes they'll pick you up at five thirty, and you're down there an hour early, which is fine. Yeah. But. But what if you need pick if you need picked up, and you're ready to go, you're just kind of waiting for them too, huh? Uh huh. I've had to wait two hours down there, from work. Wow. So they when they're on their way though, don't you get like an automatic call or something? Yes, a ten minute call. Okay. Let's you know that they're on your way. That's nice at least. Yeah, that's nice. But I've had the times when they've called me and said that and. I was, oh, 10 minutes, okay, an hour later, we're still out of here. Really? Yeah. Like, like yeah. if I work at the Steel Games, mm-hmm. and, and it's really late at night, or, yeah. or, 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 like, right after the game's over. Because it might be in traffic or oh, something. Oh, terrible traffic down yeah. there, so. Wow. That's, the, I don't get mad at that. No, it's something it's they can not, do either. It's not they can do. Yeah. But now there's times, there's a couple Maybe we times. can invent something like a flying car that would help. Yeah. Nobody would, else can have flying cars except you guys. There you go. That would work. That would be good. All right, so today we talked a lot about um, kind of the day in the life of you when you moved into the home, um, the group home, some adaptations that you might use during life and and meal time, um, a little bit about your care and access and how people who are able-bodied are pretty lucky to be able to just jump in a car and go. Yeah, very Um, lucky. I've always said people, I wish people could be in a wheelchair for one week. mm Mm-hmm. Just have this experience, this experience with like yeah. and people really think twice about everything yeah for sure so for yeah. sure all right thank you very much Cammy. as of always of course of course um okay um thank you everybody um please like and subscribe to this channel and comment and comment on and please yes please do comment on my videos all right i'll talk to you all next time uh see you later bye bye Bye.